Fallout. Yeah, we've talked about it a lot lately. The Fallout TV show is due out soon in just a few short weeks. So naturally, Fallout conversation has been ramping up. We're also wondering where the Fallout 4 next gen update is. But if there was a Fallout video I didn't expect to be making right now, it's one talking about Fallout 5. And Todd Howard's recent comments are actually more significant than you may have anticipated originally. We are going to go straight into Fallout 4 and connect the dots a little bit here on what Bethesda Game Studios may be setting up, even if it's, yeah, like six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 years down the line. Look, still, we have some information on Fallout 5. I'd like to talk about it here today. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. And before we begin, a quick word from today's sponsor. The following video is brought to you by Keen Games. Enshrouded is an early access survival action role-playing video game that released on January 24th of this year. Keep in mind I said early access though, not because I'm trying to warn you about that, but more so for the shock value of it. When you look at Enshrouded versus a lot of other AAA games that have come out in the last few months, Enshrouded is leaps and bounds above all of them in quality and content completion. The fact that it released in early access for 30 bucks is pretty surprising. We did a full dedicated video on Enshrouded. And so, yeah, I was pretty critical of Enshrouded given it was in early access and the developers are still taking a lot of feedback in. But just like how I felt about Baldur's Gate 3, where I played for a few hours and went, yep, cool, can't wait for update 1.0, I'll be here at launch. Same thing goes for Enshrouded. I played a few hours, enjoyed what was there. Sure, the combat's a little wonky, but the base building, the material gathering, the sense of place in the world, the traversal options, all made it where I'm excited for update 1.0. So there's a link in the description down below. There's a pinned comment. You can go ahead, check out Enshrouded for yourself, or you can check out our full dedicated video. I'll also have it linked in the description down below. Okay, so recently there was this press event for the Fallout TV show. I assume that they were seeing content ahead of the launch of the show. We'll see in a few short weeks if that's actually the case. But nonetheless, there were some interviews done. And we talked about prior interviews when it came to Fallout. One in particular suggesting that the Fallout TV show was Fallout 5. And we nervously laughed at that going, okay, you know, I'm excited. It's a new original story. But Fallout 5, you are not, even if you are goaded. So we have this interview to get into that maybe quells some of those fears that Todd Howard and the team were recognizing, but also talks a bit on what Fallout 5 may actually be. So we're going over to Video Games Chronicle here where they say, Todd Howard revealed Fallout 5 secrets to the Fallout TV show creators to avoid similarities. In an interview with Den of Geek, Howard, Jonathan Nolan, who's a writer, director, and executive producer on the show, and showrunner Graham Wagner explained that the series is an entirely new story set in the Fallout universe. Nolan caused confusion among fans earlier this month when, while discussing the show with Total Film, he said, quote, It's almost like we're Fallout 5. I don't want to sound presumptuous, but it's just a non-interactive version of it, right? Turns out, uh... He was a bit presumptuous here if Todd Howard's comments were anything to go by. Like I said, we saw this and went, <laughs> yeah, like, your canon, great. You're a meaningful story, hopefully, but Fallout 5, let's chill on that. You gotta earn that title, sucker, all right? However, in this new interview, Nolan explains that while the show is set in the same universe and timeline of the Fallout games, it's neither designed to replace nor recount the events of the upcoming Fallout 5 game. Speaking of the benefits of making an original show in the Fallout universe, he explained, quote, It means you have all the benefit of beautiful storytelling that Todd and Bethesda has contributed to. No mention of Obsidian, which is kind of crazy here. No mention of In Exile, kind of crazy here. But we also get to tell an original story within that world as writers and filmmakers. It's just a dream come true, end quote. I think we made Fallout 6, Wagner then replied, to which Nolan jokes, We know all about Fallout 5. We're not telling anyone. I do just want to quickly pause for a moment here and highlight that they're talking about what Bethesda built and not Obsidian, not in Exile. And again, this is a touch concerning because when you do see the Fallout TV show and the focus on the Brotherhood of Steel, that's very Bethesda Game Studios. Like, they love the Brotherhood. And you see the representation the NCR is currently getting. We'll see how it develops. I'm going to keep an open mind. But as I talked about in videos now and videos upcoming, the representation of the NCR is a little concerning when you look at where they're at in like Fallout 2, how Shady Sands has become this real capital of the NCR, and then you look at how they are in New Vegas, where they're almost like the law and order of the land if you choose that ending, and then you look at where they are now, and you see Shady Sands is like destroyed, and so that's very compelling to a longtime Fallout fan, like what happened here, but when you see that reset effectively coming in, it, you wonder if Bethesda's kind of wiping the lore clean to set something up for when they do Fallout 5, which, yes, 
may take place on the West Coast. We'll talk about that in just a moment here. Let's continue on. Howard then clarified these jokes by explaining that he did indeed share some details on Fallout 5 with the show creators, if not perhaps the full thing. Quote, well, there were some things where I said, don't do this because we are going to do that in Fallout 5, end quote, he explained. Howard also reiterated that the Fallout show will be a separate story from the game, saying it wasn't the translation of an existing story. It was, what would the next thing be? It just happens to be a TV show, end quote, which I do think is a healthy clarification to make just because it's showing that Bethesda didn't have something drafted up and they said, hey, here's this story. Go make a show out of this. And while I don't want to jump the gun too much, I do think this also potentially shuts down the notion of a connection between, say, the Fallout TV show and the next Fallout game. Maybe it's possible it still happens, but when you see that it's a very separate story existing in its own world and Todd's trying to make sure things aren't happening that are connected to the next Fallout game from them, then I do wonder if this means that this is just going to be its own independent story with a beginning, middle, and end, and that's really it. No ties or setups or leaning into what is to come next for the Fallout franchise. But more importantly are the comments on Fallout 5 here. So we got a lot of clarity on exactly what was happening with this show, the purpose of it, and some quelling of like, hey, this ain't Fallout 5. It's just a, a new thing in the Fallout timeline, which I think is important. But the most important thing we're going to talk about today is Fallout 5, right? So this is something Todd said he's shared some details on, right? For example, saying, don't do this because we're going to do that in Fallout 5. Why is this important? Maddie? you're playing this one up, aren't you? Well, no, actually, there is one particular quest in Fallout 4 that really stuck with me all these years. It's one I actually made a dedicated video on because I thought it was so significant, suggesting that the next Bethesda game, or at least the next Fallout game, should take place in the Mojave. At least if we're to go off what happened in Fallout 3, so we'll get into the weeds of that now. What I'm talking about is the Cabot House quest. This is one of my favorite quests in Fallout 4, where you track down this mysterious artifact that's allowed Lorenzo Cabot to live for like 400 years. It's really interesting, crazy stuff, and there are multiple endings to that quest line. However, in the epilogue of that quest line, there is one interesting closing line that is said before the conversation ends and the quest closes off for good. Take a listen and I'll explain my thoughts. Maybe I'll finally travel to the Southwest. My father was always convinced that there was another alien city buried somewhere in the Mojave Desert. Now, a lot of people, when I talked about this initially, hand waved it away. Like, oh, it's a cheeky nod, Mojave, whatever. I am of the belief, no matter what people say about Bethesda and their writing talent, I am of the belief they are very deliberate in their side content and setting things up for the future because they've been doing that since Fallout 3. In Fallout 3, we got a really cool side quest called The Replicated Man, talking about the synths, talking about the Commonwealth, talking about the literal core, root, and themes of Fallout 4. And guess what that entire game was about? Everything in that side quest for Fallout 3. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and pull the wool over my eyes here and act like when Todd Howard is saying, hey, don't do that, in this story set on the West Coast, we're going to do that in Fallout 5. That suggests to me that they are at least looking west for the next Fallout game, which would be a significant shakeup for Bethesda Game Studios, right? Because they've only done East Coast Fallout games. They only did the Capital Wasteland. They only did the Commonwealth. And if you really want to get into the weeds of this theory and how it has legs beyond just this single strand from a Todd Howard interview, you just have to look at the games themselves. Epic Nate actually has a 40 plus minute video dissecting all this if you're interested in checking that out. But it's there he talks about the Dunwich monster, in particular focusing on Lorenzo from the Cabot House quest line and how this can connect to some of the Dunwich elements that you see in both Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. Perhaps this mysterious alien city is something coming to a head that's been set up since Fallout 3, which I think is mighty tantalizing. But again, that is very in the thick of it, but also showing that this theory has more legs than just what Todd Howard is saying. So this would be a big deal for them to go out west, especially when a lot of the speculation was like, hey, Obsidian should be the one who handles the west and Bethesda's handling the east. For Bethesda to tackle the west would be massive and admittedly a little scary because those are all factions that they have never interfaced with before. But again, I can't help but think to myself, if you're doing a West Coast themed Fallout story in a TV show and you stop the creators from doing certain things inside that TV show because you are going to do that in Fallout 5, 
That just tells me that Fallout 5 is probably set on the West Coast when Bethesda Game Studios gets around to it. And if we're to take anything from it plot-wise, potentially it's been suggested in Fallout 4, just like Fallout 3 suggested what was going to happen in Fallout 4. And if you look at that, this mysterious alien city in the Mojave, there's a lot of ways you can pull at that. Fallout 5 could be one of those. The rumored New Vegas 2 could be another one of those. Why do I say that? Because it's been rumored many times in the past that, hey, Obsidian Entertainment is going to be working on a Fallout New Vegas 2. Xbox is kicking it around. The term's getting kicked around. Maybe that's not the final name, but it looks like a Fallout Obsidian game is something that Obsidian wants to do, as Fergus Urquhart, the CEO of Obsidian Entertainment, has expressed interest in doing. But also, I think Xbox wants to do it, and I feel like it's really up to Bethesda to just give the nod and that's as good as a done deal either way i think we're gonna get a west coast fallout game sooner rather than later it kind of makes sense if you're gonna make a fallout tv show focusing on that exposing the masses to it and then you build your next core product around that this isn't the first time we got confirmation of a fallout 5 in fact it's actually the second because we learned just around the second time we saw starfield that fallout 5's coming after elder scrolls 6 and also, we now know Elder Scrolls 6 won't be due out thanks to the FTC court case documents until at least 2026. And given Starfield and its current states and Starfield and its current support structure and what Bethesda is aiming to do there, and then Elder Scrolls 6, I would wager that that all got pushed back past 2026 as much as I would love to see Elder Scrolls 6 land then and we don't have to wait super long, which puts Fallout into quite literally potentially the mid 2030s unless obsidian does something in the middle as we've talked about before but nonetheless i thought this was more significant than people were giving it credit for it is i think mighty interesting to see that they already have a game plan for fallout 5 todd howard mentioned in that confirmation of fallout 5 coming after elder scrolls 6 that there was a fallout 5 one page already so to me that already confirms they know what the setting is and what the themes of the game will be built around and perhaps that's because when they were making their last fallout game in four they decided where they were going for five because otherwise there really aren't any quests or DLC off the top of my head that suggest any other region in the game as deliberately as they did only one other time, and that was with Fallout 3 and pointing toward what was happening in Fallout 4. So we'll see, but I actually thought the comments here were more significant than given credit for. I'm sure there will be people in the comments telling me I'm overhyping it, but look, this is this is the Maddie cut. This is what I'm here for to tell you things that have layers and connections that maybe first weren't assumed, but nonetheless, I look forward to your thoughts. So please fire away down below. With that, take excellent care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next video. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.